Wood, Wire, Wing. Emma, Lily, and Todd Invents an Airplane. Written by Kirsten W. Larson. Illustrated by Tracy Subasak. To Emma, Lily, and Todd, problems were like gusts of wind. They set her mind soaring. Sometimes the problems seem small, like where to find metal to craft her invention. Solution, she saved tin, tin cans from her supper. But soon, Lillian's challenges ballooned. Lillian grew up in a time when it seemed like everyone was tinkering. In 1886, Joseph Garris Cochran patents the dishwasher. In 1870s, Alexander Graham Bell patents the telephone. In the 1850s, the first mass-produced watches are developed by American Watch Company. In 1868, Christopher Lapham Scholes, Samuel Soleil, and Carl Lowe's Gilden invent the typewriter. In 1901, Guglielmo Macaroni sent, sends the first radio transmission across the Atlantic. In 1879, incandescent light bulbs are patented by Thomas Edison. In 1851, Isaac Singer patents a practical sewing machine with many more to follow. And in 1870, pneumatic subway is built by Alfred Eli Black Beach in New York, including Lillian's grandfather, who invented his own carriage wheel. Just like grandfather, Lillian whittled and fiddled, turning dreams into useful inventions. One winter, Lillian rescued a broken toy from the trash and snatched a ball off the Christmas tree. She trimmed and twisted, fitted and filed and fitted. Would the weather vane work? Lillian took it outside for a test. When the wind blew, the weather vane pointed true. Success! Another day, she took apart a clock, spreading the pieces before her. Did this wheel fit her here? Did that lever fit there? She put the pieces back this way. No tick. She put the pieces back that way. No talk. The clock stayed still. Failure! Lillian stood baffled, yet buoyed by the challenge. Ever since I can remember, I couldn't have a piece of tin or wire in my hands without bending it and twisting it to make something. I was always making things, and my mother saw to it that I wasn't discouraged, that I had the tools I wanted. Lillian taught in 1910. Lillian couldn't imagine a life without tools or tin, wires or wheels. Yet inventing wasn't women's work. So she did the next best thing. She got a job typing up plans for new machines at the U.S. Patent Office. While Lillian's fingers raced across the keys, she constructed each contraption in her mind. Soon blueprints for fantastical flying machines flooded the office, but could they really fly? Lillian needed to know. Lillian fixed her eyes on a new horizon, a future of flight. She tinkered with tiny aircraft in her new Manhattan apartment after long days of typing, winding rubber band propellers to send small airships soaring, stitching balloons which bobbed and bounced from the ceiling. While Lillian tinkered and tested, other inventors flew the first full-sized airplanes, but when she read the news, she simply shook her head. Their designs still seemed fantastical, not practical. Lillian vowed to build something better, an airplane with sloping wings to glide like a bird and a cockpit for two. The machine of the Wright brothers has to be navigated by its operator lying flat and waving his legs in the air. My machine will be operated by a woman, I hope, and she will swing in a basket below and balance it as automatically as does a person riding a bicycle. Lillian Todd in 1908. Lillian spent hours considering the crows circling overhead, studying the angle of an albatross's wing, and constructing models that hung like chandeliers from the ceiling. Before long, her airplane took over her apartment. Then it took over her life. Amidst the parts and pieces, Lillian's bird emerged from bamboo covered in canvas. At last, she strapped a doll into the basket and sent it soaring. It dipped, then dove straight down crash the airplane and its passengers smashed to pieces with a second model lillian's hopes took flight once more but her model didn't failure lillian stood there baffled but buoyed by the challenge then on the third try her model slipped into the sky until whap, a slight mishap when a wire snapped yet it was a breakthrough 
Now Lillian knew an airplane built from her design could fly. The men make fun of the way I construct my models, but they admit that my ideas are all right and that a full-sized airplane built in accordance with those same despised models will fly, which is the principal thing after all, isn't it? Lillian Todd in 1908. By 1908, Lillian realized her ballooning project couldn't cram into her apartment. She was simply short on space and short on money too. What could Lillian do to keep her dream aloft? Why? Tackle each setback one by one, like a pilot ticking off a checklist. Get money. Check. She asked Olivia Sage, one of the richest women in the world. I have always been interested in Lillian because I think she is a capable woman and I like to see women do things. Olivia Sage in 1910. Find space. Check. She hired the Whitman brothers to assemble the airplane at their plant. Sketch a frame of sturdy spruce. Check. Buy supplies muslin, army duck, and piano wire to put it all together. Check, check, double check. A year later, there was one box left to check. Find an engine. By that time, suitable airplane engines were hard to come by, as scarce as women working with wood and wire. Instead, Lillian had to make do with a car engine. At last, her plane was ready for takeoff. The machine is completed and ready to prove to the world that a woman's machine is quite equal to a man-made flyer and far more practical in some respects than many he has made. Lillian Todd, 1909. An airplane crafted by a woman was quite a curiosity. So, no surprise, Lillian chose to showcase her plane at the 1909 Innerborough Fair in New York where it captivated crowds alongside cannons catapulting ladies through the sky. As the fairgoers crushed close, Lillian readied her plane for liftoff, but the engine sputtered, the plane shuddered. It wouldn't budge at all. Failure. Buoyed by the challenge, Lillian brainstormed her next set steps. Secure space to work throughout the winter, check. Study motors and revise her design. Check. Score another engine, an airplane engine. Double check. Since the engine company crafted just two a month, Lillian knew she would have to wait and wait and wait some more for almost a year while tweaking and tinkering with her design. When the engine finally arrived in the fall of 1910, Lillian checked the final box, installed the engine. She gave it a whirl. The new engine purred, the propeller whirred. Lillian's dreams were ready to soar once more. It's a work that grips you. I work myself 17 hours a day often and then fuss because I've got to go to bed and waste time sleeping. Lillian Todd in 1910. On November 7, 1910, cars lined a road along the field and crowds crushed clothes to watch the latest marvels. Daring pilots demonstrating flying machines. Some were fantastical, others, like Lillian's, were quite practical. As the day dragged on, slicing icy winds whipped across the plane. One pilot scuttled his flight, declaring it too windy to fly. Lillian worried about the weather. Should she wait and waste her chance? Lillian wouldn't wing it. She had waited four years to see her plane lift off. She could wait a few moments more. When the winds died down, Lillian made her final checks and found the best spot to study her airplane's every dip and dive. At last, Lillian's pilot drove the plane onto the field, bouncing across the grass, picking up speed, faster, 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 until success! It lifted off, soaring toward the future. Will I guide it myself? Well, I think perhaps during the experimental stages, I may simply observe its actions but later on, I surely will drive it. Lillian Todd in 1910. Filled with flying. There is no work so discouraging, so exasperating, so delightful, so mean, so difficult, so exhilarating as building airplanes. Lillian Todd, 1910. Author's note. The Wright brothers invented the airplane in 1903. When I was growing up, their success seemed like the end of the story. But what I've learned from a lifetime of living and working around planes is that the right flyer was just the beginning. 
Being the first to make something doesn't always mean your solution is the best one. Engineers spend as much time improving existing designs as creating new ones. The Wright Brothers airplane was an amazing achievement, but imagine if pilots today still lay on their stomachs and slid their hips back and forth to help control the plane like the Wrights did. Inventors like Lily and Todd wanted to build planes that flew better and could be controlled like a car or bicycle. Every designer had his or her own idea, and for many years, each airplane built in the United States was unique. No two looked just alike. Each flight proved new ideas right or wrong and helped create the airplanes we know today. While many early airplane designers competed to fly faster, higher, and farther, Lillian focused on making airplanes a practical form of transportation, like the trolley. Along the way, she got her own patent for an invention to hold up papers while she typed. She also became the Aeronautics Society's first woman member and founded the Junior Aero Club in America, which taught children the science of flight and encouraged invention. After her airplane's successful flight, Lillian donated it to the New York National Guard, making the Guard the first state military to have an airplane. Many of Lillian Todd's ideas don't survive in modern airplanes. She talked often of her plane's bird-like wings, yet airplanes today don't have them. Once tested, they might not have made the airplanes fly any better. Yet other choices she made do survive, like the use of ailerons. These hinged surfaces invented by Glenn, Glenn Curtis were an improvement over the Wright brothers' idea of twisting the wings to control the airplane. At places like the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, where I worked for six years, engineers still grapple with issues from Lillian's day, like making better engines and improving control during flight. They experiment with solar-powered and electric planes. They invent new designs for flying faster without making noisy sonic booms. And they create ways to automatically control airplanes to make them safer to fly. There is at least one big difference from Lillian's day. Today, many airplane engineers are women. I think Lillian would have liked